fucking times. And you try to say it and give yourself a fucking herniated testicle. And I couldn't do it. But I tell you what I do, I have a trick. And uh, um, the trick is that I try and find words in Polish that sound like something in English. So the Polish word for, uh, for Sunday is, what's the Polish word for Sunday? Nigella. Which, in my mind, when I first heard this, this reminds me of Nigella. As in Nigella Moss, exactly. So now, this is the trick I'm using. And uh, now I have a word, and I'm going to build on the word. I feel good, I'm not an idiot, I'm not a total cretin. And uh, then there's an expression in Polish. It's a lovely expression. It sounds lovely when you say it. So to rubbish. And you know what this means. So, so to, and I like this, because this reminds me of the English, sort the rubbish. Excuse me, your desk is very dirty. Can you sort the rubbish, please? <laughs> sort the rubbish there, good man. Oh, sort the rubbish, Nigella. Now I have sense. It's brilliant. I love this. It's absolutely brilliant. The biggest problem for me in Poland with the language is that I have to mind things a lot. Yeah, it's okay if I go to the supermarket, I go to the middle or whatever it is, be drunk, uh, and if what I want is on the shelf, I just get it, I, whatever it is, I shop it, put it in my pockets or out. And, uh, but if it's not there, I have a problem. It's, it's, it can be tough. Like the other day, well, about a month ago, I was uh, looking for beef. And I was there in Tesco looking for beef, and I couldn't find the fucking beef. And I turned to the Tesco lady, sorry, where's the beef? And she's like, mm, my beef. Oh, Christ, I have to do this. I have to do the mime. And the poor woman, she thought I was horny or something. She took me over, she took me over to the condom section. Stamps is the big thing. You can never predict this. Stamps. Have you ever tried to mine the word stamp? I went in there one day, I ran into the post office, and I was in a rush for some reason. Obviously, some very important letter I had to post. And the woman behind the glass, I went, please, I need stamps, quickly, stamps. And she's like, ah. oh, come on, stamps is the reason you're here. Jesus Christ, don't make me do this. Okay. <laughs> stamps for the letter. <laughs> and of course, she thought I was a sexual pervert or something. <laughs> He makes the face like my Uncle Tomic. <laughs> Every Christmas he comes to me and makes that face. Um, uh, the miming thing is, uh, uh, is uh, I think every foreign man can, can, uh, can relate to the miming thing. And I, uh, I'm, get, I'm getting past it. I'm, I am getting past it. And the certain words I'm picking up, I'm, uh, I'm getting to know more words. Uh, uh, because the great thing about Polish is that there are... Polish has very exciting sounding words for boring things. So let me give you an example. What comes to mind? Uh, schlimak. <laughs> and I never knew what schlimak meant. And I thought, schlimak, this sounds fucking amazing. Schlimak. <laughs> to me, schlimak sounded like some character from Game of Thrones. I am Schlimak! <laughs> I will cut off your testicles and feed them to my dragon. <laughs> my dragon called Buraki. <laughs> Come, Buraki, let us fly to the moon. <laughs> and my wife said to me one day, do you know what this word means? I said, no, 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 I haven't clue. And she goes, it means snail. <laughs> I was like, wow, that shows you how weak and ineffectual the English language is, snail. Something boring and insignificant has to sound boring and insignificant. Can you imagine? A character called Snail in Game of Thrones. He wouldn't last five fucking seconds. Shemak would come in with a big sword and chop off his head and drink his blood. Ah! And then go and just make love to 20 virgins after that. Because I am Shemak! <laughs> I love another word. It's a great word. It's a sexy word. It's cha-cha. Cha-cha. Which cha-cha means, what does it mean? It means aunt. That's right, aunt. My aunt Mary came to visit today. But in Polish, it's cha-cha. When you hear this word, you just want to orgasm or do dirty dancing with Patrick Swayze or something. It's amazing. Cha-cha. And my wife has a cha-cha yalla. Cha-cha yalla. When these two words came together, I fucking almost came in my pants. Cha-cha yalla. Cha-cha yalla. It was my birthday. And uh, my wife said, cha-cha yalla is coming. And I was like, oh my God, this woman's going to have a tight red dress and she's going to have you know, about bosom, and she's going to be crazy, and we're going to do dirty dancing, like I was saying, we're going to do dirty dancing all night, and there was a knock on the door, and it was Judge Ayala, I went to open the door, and there was a little woman holding a cheesecake and wearing a crucifix, and that was Judge Ayala. <laughs> <Jim Bobby. laughs> yes, come in. Then there's another good word, Jacob, it's, uh, 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 it's the man in the grassy knoll, it's, uh, uh, um, uh, bitch, bitch, 
I love this. Which in English means to be. To be, it's very philosophical, but in Polish it's just an angry word. It's bitch, straight away. Bitch, I love it. Now I can insult my wife and she doesn't even know. You bitch! What did you say? Nothing, I'm just practicing my Polish, darling. <laughs> you fucking bitch. <laughs> it sounds like I'm a little bit of a, a, bit of a pervert the way this thing is going. I'm sorry about my breathing there, Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, the, uh, the worst thing about not being able to speak Polish is that you can't get angry with people. There's no point getting angry with someone if they don't understand you. Like um, last winter, I'll give you an example. I was in the park, there's a lovely park beside my house, and um, it was freezing, it was winter, and snow and everything, but I like to jog, and uh, I'm now jogging. And uh, there was a man coming towards me, a man with a dog. You never see this in Poland ever, anyone with dogs. And um, I was going straight for the man and the dog, and the dog freaked out, and he just burst. And he wasn't a crazy dog, he wasn't like a rock he was just an ordinary dog. And he ran over to me, he broke free, and he ran up to me, and he started biting at my groin, through at my sweatpants, pulling at my fucking groin. Now, luckily, as I said, it was very cold, and as all the men in the audience know, yeah, if you know this, when it's cold, we uh, undergo a, a, a physical transformation in the groin area. There's, a, there's shrinkage in the groin area. So there was nothing for him to buy. My penis was like a fucking peanut. It was terrible. Look at any cashew. It was terrible. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. We can go through all the nuts. Maybe it was a Brazilian nut. I don't know. It, was, oh, it wasn't a hazelnut anyway, but it was a cashew Brazilian nut. It was something like that. And uh, he had nothing to buy. Thank Christ. And I pushed the dog away. And I was angry. Not at the dog. I angry at the owner. And I wanted to insult him. I really did. I wanted to say something like, um, a pestilence on you, sir, and may the bites of a thousand fleas torment your scrotum forever. <laughs> this is what I wanted to say, but I don't know how to say this in Polish. And the only thing I could think to say was, Soto rubbish, Nigella! <laughs> Which really freaked him out. <laughs> what am I doing on Sunday? I don't know. <laughs> I'm happy. Um, I should have really freaked him out and went, You chacha yala schlimak, bitch! <laughs> I love it. Things sound angry, don't they? They sound angry in Polish. Yeah, Polish is an angry, it's an angry language. It sounds like in a really, you know, tough, tough fucking language. The reason why I can't learn it, the reason why I can't get to grips with the Polish language at all, is because I already have a, a, a bad life experience with one uh, uh, other difficult language, Irish. Uh, and uh, I don't need a second difficult, life, difficult language in my life at all. I don't need this at all. Um, the Irish language, as some of the Irish people might know. Did you learn? You guys learned it in school, and uh, it, it's 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 evil, isn't it? It's a nasty language. It's a, I mean, people in Ireland have like their special psychiatric units for people who've spoken too much Irish. It's dangerous. Yeah, the Polish people, you've heard it, have you? You've, you've heard that. You've it sounds to me, it just always sounds like a crow trapped in a chimney committing suicide. That's what Irish sounds like. I don't know. Does anyone have a better metaphor? It sounds like a Chinese man falling backwards down the stairs or something with lots of marbles in his mouth. I don't know, it's just, it's, it's tough. Like, you know, most languages have one word for hello, like, you know, bienvenue, welcome, jeszcze, whatever, Allah Akbar, whatever it is. But in, but what is it in Irish? It's, you know, we will do. You know, it's the Klingons are about to attack. That's what it sounds like. <laughs> What's it? I'm in love with you. I'm <laughs> Tommy, raw, that, grow, grow. That's the Irish word for love. Can you imagine you're, you're there and you're a Polish woman and you meet this guy out in the bar, you have a great time, you go home, you have sex, you wake up in the morning and this guy turns to him and goes, Tommy, raw, that. You're going to go over and phone the fucking police, aren't you? <laughs> I think he's going to kill me. <laughs> what? He loves me, okay. <laughs> grow, grow. There is only one. Irish is just a rough language, but there's one sentence in Irish. There's one sentence that is euphonic. It is, it sounds nice. It's, uh, I'll tell you, it's the only sentence, it's famous, the sentence, the only nice sentence in the Irish language. Ta muid erach. Ta muid erach. Let's all say it together. Let's all join together. Ta muid erach. Jakob, say it. Say it, Jakob. Ta <laughs> Isn't it lovely? Do you guys know what it means, the Irish people? Do you know? Well, it, it means we are gay. 
<laughs> Isn't that great? I love that. It sounds like something like, we are gay. Of course it would sound nice. Gay, it's lovely. It's, I love it. Palma Jerich, we are gay. I get the Polish people, whenever I'm doing stand-up in Poland, for them to say this, and they all say it. They love learning Irish. I'm learning Irish, Palma Jerich! And then I tell them that, you know, we are gay, and they all start to cry, and the audience bring their mothers. <laughs> I can't go to church on Sunday. I'm gay now. The man said it. I'm gay. <laughs> the man with the glasses said it. There is only one sexy language in the in the world, and of course that's French. Only someone speaking French could make you walk over to a guillotine to have your head chopped off, couldn't they? Monsieur, voulez-vous aller à la guillotine, s'il vous plaît? Once you, once you hear voulez-vous, you'll do fucking anything. Voulez-vous eat shit? Yeah, oh no, it's all lovely. Voulez-vous jump off the cliff? Let's do it! Like Abba, voulez-vous? It's brilliant. I mean, take a phrase. Take a phrase, Jacob, that you might say to your wife or your girlfriend. You know, something nice. You might, in English, you might say, like, uh, Oh, darling, you're looking very, very sexy tonight, you know? But say it in French, and it just jumps into a different dimension, doesn't it? Tu es un très sacré petit cochon. Cochon, I love it. I mean, if you're a woman right now, right, in your mind, you have images, don't you? Tell the truth, there's images in your mind now, beautiful, sexy people, sitting outside boulevards, covering themselves in chocolate. As Nicolas Sarkozy floats by, wearing Carla Bruni's Black Eve Saint Laurent evening dress. That's what you think when you hear that. Tu es un très sacré petit cochon. What would be the equivalent in Polish? You're very sexy, you're looking very sexy tonight. Alice Chibia Dubcia. <laughs> Sorry, the subtitle machine is broken tonight, and that's the fuck. If only it wasn't broken, I can explain that joke now and just it'll take about ten minutes and it'll just ruin the Poles' night. So we won't. They'll explain it to you later on. Can you imagine? And the type of person that says it, he's called Valdek, isn't he? Valdek from the Snobbiets. Valdek. It's terrible, huh? People getting loving at other people. What the fuck is he on about? <laughs> Surrealness in Cork. <laughs> um, people uh, often ask me uh, about um, the similarities, the differences, the similarities between the, the two places and stuff. And uh, there are lots of similarities between Ireland and Poland. There's loads of them. There's loads of them. Um, you see immigration, high immigration, high unemployment. Same, the same. We're, we're poor now too. What else? Uh, um, religion. They're Catholic. Poles, you're Catholic, aren't you? We're Catholic too. Except Polish people are just extra strength Catholic, aren't you? <laughs> you're so Catholic. You're so Catholic that the church has its own radio station. Radio Maria! <laughs> I love Radio Maria. I tune into them whenever I'm feeling just a little bit down and, you know, I feel that I'm not, you know, good or something because. There's people that are crazier than me, it's amazing. Radio Maria, sometimes what they'll do, I've, ch I've heard this, they will do a live commentary of a mass, like a football thing. And you join us here today, live on top of St. Anna's Mountain, where Father Marek Dubowski is saying his fifth mass in two days. Marek Dubowski, he's got the communion. Will he go to the fat lady or the little boy? Will he go left, will he go right? No, he trips, he falls, he drops the communion. Oh, Marek Dubowski, and I see the bishop, he wants to make a substitution, new priest. Back to you in the studio. And next on Radio Maria, we have music, Nirvana, Teen Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> that was joke. Next, we have music of nuns crying for 12 hours. <laughs> but stay tuned, because after nuns crying, Sister Regatta will be here, and she will tell you the top 10 ways to kill homosexual. <laughs> There's loads of similarities. You hate your politicians, we hate our politicians. Even though we don't have any famous politicians, really. We have Bono, uh, the man who's still trying to prove that no matter how bad your music is, you can still give it away for free. But in Poland, you have, who's the fame? Tusk, Tusk. And everyone hates Tusk. Whenever I mention Tusk, people start to go, boo, and they start throwing fridges at me or something. And I like Tusk. I like politicians that look like they've been snorting cocaine for 12 hours. <laughs> and that look he has, like he's been up all night. <laughs> I love it. I don't know why you're complaining about him, because now you have Kaczynski. This is amazing, isn't it? Kaczynski. Christ almighty. Kaczynski, the sound of the coffin opening. <laughs> I'm back. Just when you thought it was safe to be gay and Jewish. 
Come, come, do that. Dude is the president. Do that, come, we go kill the homosexuals in Warsaw. And do that, I love the new president. He's just an imbecile. Um, he reminds me of Goofy from, from Disney. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> Why do we have to kill the homosexuals, Mr. Kaczynski? Because they do bad things. They get their hands and stick them up their bums and everything. <laughs> but you do that to me and you don't mind. <laughs> Sorry, Polish political joke. Um, so that's what you have, Kaczynski now. This, this, uh, this lovely, cuddly uncle. Listen, he's a lovely man. He's a great guy. He's just, he just, just happens to be, just happens to be very, very, very crazy. The other thing that strikes me about uh, the similarities between the two countries is obviously we were all invaded. We were invaded. We had eight hundred years of oppression, and the Poles had everyone picking on them. The Poles were kind of like the fat kid in the in the schoolyard. Everyone bullied them. Everyone, the Swedes, the Turks, the, the Russians, the Germans, everyone was picking on poor Poland. And uh, so we have the same mentality. We've been invaded, and we're like cynical, and we're we're cautious. And my thing is, but the Irish, we kind of hide it well. We kind of laugh and joke, and we get drunk and we mask it. But deep down, Irish people are very, I don't know. We're kind of we're just we're cynical. We're rough, <laughs> you know. Deep down, there's a kind of a rawness there to us. Like um, I'll give you an example. Um, uh, an American man, he gets up in the morning. And uh, he sees his neighbor with a beautiful new car, like a Lexus or something, or a BMW. And the American people are just, they're naturally positive for some reason. And the American man will look at the car, and his first instinct is to kind of go, wow, what a great car. You know what? I'm going to get a job, I'm going to work hard, and I'm going to buy a car just like that. That's what I'm going to do. Where's the Irishman? He gets up in the morning, well, maybe not the morning, maybe the afternoon, and he... He sees his neighbor with the beautiful car and he goes, that's a great car. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get a job and I'm going to work hard and I'm going to buy a fucking brick and destroy that fucking car. Because <laughs> that's, that's our mentality. We have a, the Pol you, there's a flower. Like, what do you call those little yellow flowers? Dandelions, aren't they? But in Poland, they have a lovely name for them. They call them, what do they call them? Um, Lech, isn't it? That's it. And, uh, we have a name for them too. It's kind of like an unofficial name in Ireland. We call them pissy beds. That's what we call them in Ireland. Because we have a belief in this country. We have a belief that if you smell that flower and you go home, you'll piss all over your bed. Nothing to do with the 10 pints of Guinness you drank. Not at all. It was the fucking, it was the flower that made me do it. Fucking flower. And that's the Irish. There's just kind of this roughness and darkness underneath. Even our sports, for Christ's sake. Jesus Christ. I mean, hurling. The, uh, I can't, I'm trying to explain hurling to Polish people and it's, a, it's just a mental game. 30 people going into a field with sticks shaped like axes and they attack each other. And this is the game that you have, this is our national sport and everyone plays it. And there's a rumour that there's a ball somewhere in this game. I've never seen a ball in a game of hurling at all. There's no ball at all. In other countries this happens, it would be like a, a riot. The police would be called. In Ireland you hit the other guy hard enough and we'll give you a medal. I was always there when the hurling game would be on as a kid and trying to avoid having my, you know, brain splattered out. And uh, I'd always be wishing, why couldn't I be involved or born in a, in a country where there were sexy sports? You know, where like, uh, like Brazil, for example, where they have, they have the beach volleyball. This is a sport. You just, you're on the beach and you're bouncing and you're tanned and there's bikinis and stuff and the worst thing that can happen to you is a little bit of sand gets in your eye or something and after the game you go and you have the mango and the papaya and the lovely fruit and everything and it's, it's sexy. Oh, why couldn't I be born in England where they invented tennis on the grass? This is the most spectacular sport ever. Tennis on the grass is brilliant. And for a man there is no better sport than ladies tennis. You just sit there and you watch these two beautiful women in miniskirts. And it's always the same two women. It's always some Eastern European, Russian, blonde woman who's just robotic. She's just incredible. She's perfect. There's someone in the audience with a joystick. She's just incredible. And it's always one of the Venus Williams, Serena sisters against her. And just in case, after maybe half an hour or an hour of this, you get a little bit bored, they start making these beautiful little noises, don't they? Ah! Oh, ah! Oh, ah! Oh, yeah! Oh, it's just the most incredible game. Or maybe, why couldn't I have been born in France? I don't know what the national sport is in France. Probably sleeping with your wife's sister or something. And afterwards they have the beautiful 
beautiful food too. Why couldn't I have been born there? Um, the thing about uh, 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 Poland is that there is, uh, and Ireland, the difference, similarities, differences between Poland and Ireland, is that uh, uh, there is one big difference. And that is what I was talking to you about earlier on. That's the, um, the women. The women are just fucking stunning. And they're everywhere. They're on the street there. They're climbing trees. They're floating around. They're every, it's amazing. And it's not that the Irish, Irish women are beautiful too. It's just that the little things about the Polish women that just, from a man's point of view, just makes them very, very attractive. Like, first of all, their names are sexy. Like, oh, oh, Ola. Ola is the most sexy, sexiest name I've ever heard in my life. And there's Basha. I love Basha. It just, it just gets me going. Whereas in Ireland, it's Emer. Emer is the most popular female. Is it, you're not Emer, are you? No, you're not. Emer, Emer. It sounds like a fucking ambulance. Emer, Emer. That's what you need after you've dated an Emer. <laughs> And Emer, I have all the Emers I dated, just their voices. And that's another thing that's seen. Irish women are beautiful, but the voices sometimes just, they go into this kind of broken lawnmower territory, you know. Emer, do you want to go for a coffee? <coughs> Emer, do you want to go to the movies? Anything at all? <coughs> Whereas Polish women have these very sexy voices. And it doesn't matter. How old a Polish woman is? She could be in her 50s. Just the voice has turned me on. Like I'm at the checkout in Tesco's in Poland and the woman there is turning me on. Do you have a Tesco club card? And I always pretend that I uh, just don't hear it. Just so she'll say it again. Sorry, what did I say? Do you have a Tesco club card? Maybe I do. Maybe I don't. <laughs> Why don't you find out for yourself, all that? They're like Bond girls. They're just full of mystery. I love them. They're just great. You can never get a straight answer out of a Polish woman. Magda, I'm sure Chris is always asking you questions. You know, what are you doing today? I could tell you, but then I would have to kill you. <laughs> yeah, you're just mysterious. There's always a mission. There's always something to do. There's always someone's head to put in, in between your thighs and crush. You know what that Bond thing? Get the bond with it, squeeze the guy with his... What a way to die, I'd love to die that way. My head squeezed by that woman's thighs. Be brilliant. Don't stop! Um, but despite being very pretty and very sexy sounding and having sexy names, Polish women still find it difficult to find... Uh, in Poland, anyway. They find it difficult to find uh, a partner. Um, and it's amazing to see this. And I, I see it with my wife. She has lots of sisters. She has lots, lots of cousins. And uh, there was this magazine article my wife read to me. It was from Cosmo or something. And uh, it had this weird statistic, Polish Cosmo. It said that if you're a Polish woman over the age of 40, it is more likely that you will be the victim of a bear attack than find a husband. <laughs> and I was thinking, where did they come up with this statistic? Is there some crazy rule in Poland that if you haven't found a husband by the time you're 40, that's it, you have to go to the forest, you have to live there, you're exiled to the forest, go, go and live with these squirrels. Maybe, I'd say what it probably is, by the time you're 40 and in Poland, uh, you've just had enough of fucking Polish men and you want to try a different species. I think that's... I think I will try the bear, it could work, you know? It's could be the only reason. And you see it too with kind of Polish women. The big problem is that with Polish women is that the, the Polish women make a big mistake when they're out. You know, uh, they wait for the man, the Polish man, to make the first move. And you can't do this, okay? Because Polish men don't know how to make the first move, okay? They just don't get it. The only way a Polish man is going to make the first move on a Polish woman is if she's standing between a bottle of vodka or something. Yeah, that's the only way that that he's gonna, he's gonna go for. You need to get out there. You need to go to the parties, go to the clubs, go to all the discos, find a man you find attractive, and start flirting with him. And no matter how much you think you're flirting, you need to quadruple it. Because the Polish men, yeah, but you don't understand flirting at all. Polish men haven't a clue about flirting. You know, Mabusho, why is she smiling at me? Mabusho, Mabusho, why is she touching my arm? Oh, she wants my sperm. No, 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 no. It's for my Mabusho. <laughs> She puts it on her flowers. <laughs> you fuck. 
<laughs> and you find uh, you find that these magazines like Gazbo and Vogue and Elle and Poland, they give women hints how to flirt. They say, when you're talking to a man, you know, fiddle with your boobies, you know. When you're talking to a man, you know, put your hand through your hair. When you're talking to a man, fiddle with your earrings. I say, don't do this at all, don't. The Polish man won't think you're flirting. He'll just think you have knees or something. Which could be true if your previous boyfriend was a bear. And I, uh... I, I've changed since I went to Poland. It's kind of strange. Uh, when I first went there, I was uh, well, I was happy, and uh, uh, I could get up in the morning very early, and I was excited because I was in a different place. I was in Kavitsa. It's nice. Wow, this is great. Challenge. And uh, I get up in the morning, and I'd see my neighbour coming out, a man called Arik, and I'd say hello to him. Hey, hello. How are you doing? And um, Polish men have this very, very enthusiastic way of saying hello back to you, like gender. Oh, <laughs> Which uh, I just thought he wasn't well or something. I thought like he was, you know, terminal cancer or something, but uh, he wasn't. But I wouldn't let this affect me. I'd walk down the street in Kavitsa, the main street, and I'd be looking for people to talk to, because that's what Irish people do. We see it in Cork, we see it in Gold. We just walk down the street, and we just want someone to talk to, because we just can't stop talking. And we just see someone who we met maybe 10 years ago, and he walked into our garden by accident, but, ah, oh God, it's not, it's not. it's not even words, it's just. Noises were shouting, but they wanted to go and drink with us and so. And I was trying to do this in Poland. People wouldn't look at me or anything, and they wouldn't talk to me. And uh, but still, they wouldn't let it get me down. And uh, my wife would give me these missions to do. She'd say like, uh, "Go get milk." And uh, I was because I just came from Ireland. I had euros, and I was rich, rich, rich. And I would go, I wouldn't go to Tesco to get the milk. I wouldn't go to Lidl. I would go to where the most expensive milk was, which is the Eco Store. Almond milk, coconut milk, every type of fucking milk. And it was really expensive. It was the equivalent of like, you know, I don't know, 10 euro for a liter of almond milk. And I go, brilliant, I have loads of money. Give me 10 liters. And I take those 10 liters home and I pour them into the bath and I wash myself. It was brilliant. And then my wife would say, um, go get condom. And, um, I wouldn't go to Lidl, because Lidl in Poland, I don't know if they have them here, they have the cheapest condoms in the world. There's, these condoms are called Mondos. <laughs> and Mondos condoms are brilliant. A pack of 50 costs two zloty, which is like 50 cents. A pack of 50?